Voyager's pictures were just an appetizer, however. The ongoing Cassini mission should be a Saturnian feast. Named after the Italian astronomer who studied the planet in the 17th century, Cassini is on its way to explore Saturn's entire system, rings, moons, and all. Professor Carolyn Porco, Lady of the Rings. What we're hoping to learn from Cassini is how the solar system formed and how the planets formed, and we're going to examine the, the satellite system, and in particular, the rings. And we're also hoping to learn about what makes atmospheres tick and how stable they are, uh, what brings about energetic jet streams like we have here on the Earth. The Voyagers will be a hard act to follow. But Cassini, with its superior instrumentation, has two decades of advances in technology on its side. Launched in 1997, Cassini has had a couple of detours on its way to its final destination. In 98, it performed the first of two flybys of Venus, gaining momentum with the gravity assist. Cassini continued its mission via Jupiter in 2001, successfully photographing both the planet and its moons before catapulting out of its system. The satellite is now on its final leg of the journey. Cassini is on course to arrive at Saturn in the middle of 2004. Many questions remain unanswered about Saturn, the most beautiful of the gas giants. Not just about its rings, but about the planet and its moons. Saturn's largest moon, Titan, is the source of most speculation. Titan is the only satellite in the whole solar system that has a substantial atmosphere, and its atmosphere is believed to be similar to the atmosphere that we had here on Earth prior to the emergence of life. Titan's orange hue comes from a primitive cocktail of gases. Here, methane snow falls through the nitrogen atmosphere. This is the same chemical duet that played on Earth in warmer climes and older times, three and a half billion years ago. But on Titan, at minus 300 degrees Fahrenheit, the flint to kindle life was never struck. Cassini will send a probe down through the noxious atmosphere of Titan. Looking at this primitive frozen Earth, it will be our telescope through time. For two and a half hours, it will peer through the veil of Titan's atmosphere. Once landed, it will relay data and pictures, but just for a few minutes. Then, it will be claimed by either the cold or the chemistry of this hostile environment. While Cassini continues on its course for Saturn, we can study Voyager images of other strange bodies that inhabit the Saturnian system. One of the spookiest is Mimas, another of Saturn's moons. Mimas looks like uh, a natural version of the Death Star in Star Wars because one of its surfaces is almost completely dominated by a giant crater. Now, had the object which caused the crater been slightly bigger, Mimas would have been totally destroyed and by now would have been assimilated into Saturn's rings. Our knowledge of the solar system seems to come in bursts. Until 1781, as far as we knew, Saturn was the edge of the solar system. And then along comes William Herschel and discovers a brand new planet. Suddenly our world, our whole worldview, was much larger than it had been before. It was a significant step forward for understanding our universe, our place in our cosmos. What Herschel found in 1781 was Uranus. For 200 years, all we could learn from our telescopes were the size, the tilt, and the composition of the planet. But with Voyager 2 in 1986, came the chance to get a close look at the planet. The first pictures were disappointing. Uranus was a bland, featureless world with little in the way of clouds. What Voyager also saw, however, 
was the rings, and they confirmed an amazing story. The new close-ups of the rings revealed that they are in fact younger than the planet, suggesting that the debris within may be remnants of a moon or other celestial object broken up by an impact or gravitational forces. So it's quite possible that Uranus was once blasted almost into oblivion. Before the planet became history, a residual core had enough gravity to pull most of the pieces back together into the planet we see today. Those younger outer rings are the evidence of that cataclysmic event. Voyager discovered 10 new moons of Uranus, but it surpassed itself with its images of Miranda, one of the five previously known moons. Only 300 miles across, it has plateaus, canyons, cliffs, and craters. A crazy collection of surface features, all packed into one small moon, and all seen in amazing detail by Voyager. Miranda is a collection of fragments of ice and rock that came together, disintegrated, and then reformed. A dynamic surface that is still flexing and moving. Instead of a few pages, Voyager wrote whole chapters about Uranus and its moons. Then, the Hubble Space Telescope took up the story. When the Hubble went back and had another look at Uranus, there was an increasing amount of cloud activity, possibly due to changing climate conditions as Uranus goes through different seasonal changes, which should be monitored. Hubble is still capturing new images of Uranus, as well as its system of moons. With yet another recent discovery, the distant planet's current tally of moons is now up to 21. Hubble continues to look. As we struggled to look further into space, observation gave way to calculation. A new planet was predicted before it was actually observed. Uranus kept changing speed, suggesting that something big was pulling on it. It was Neptune, predicted before it was seen by a German telescope in 1846. On the last leg of its odyssey, Voyager flew past the Neptune system. The date was August 24, 1989. Voyager confirmed the existence of yet another ring system. Its images allowed us to paint this picture. The craft came within just 3,000 miles of the cloud tops, its closest planetary encounter. Those expecting a dull, frozen planet were in for a surprise. Neptune was alive with colorful weather systems, Winds raging at over a thousand miles an hour. Storms that appeared as vast blue spots, one of them larger than the Earth. But five years later, Voyager's great storm had gone. In 1994, Hubble found a new one, but in the Northern Hemisphere. Neptune's moon, Triton.